I remember my father's parents um, in Aiken, um, and I remember my mother's mother in Bladenboro, Aiken, South Carolina, and Bladenboro, North Carolina. Um, mm, very strict, both pa grandparents, very strict. And my grandmother, her dream, Mrs. Falk, her dream was to allow me to have the kind of education that would separate me from, I don't think she realized that she was separating me from the community, but she certainly was. Um, I sat on the porch of her home because she had uh, property. So they arrived in the morning w with the workers to pick cotton and tobacco. And she had a huge curing house where... Um, Pork part, and... The, and tobacco. And tobacco. Oh, Very, oh. very big with tobacco. Um, she went to the marketplace in town. And uh, I didn't realize that she was the only black person there for many years. It, she never dealt with that. She dealt with what she came to do. Um, did you hear how the people addressed her? Yes. And did they address her by her last name or first name? Ms. Rebecca. All right. <laughs> At all times. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Ms. Rebecca had a long braid down her back, and she definitely had a kind of authority that was not to be ignored. Um, it was not arrogance. She was just very clear about who she was and what she wanted for herself and her family. And she was also very clear about her, her uh, morality. So she was Ms. Rebecca. And um, I was her little lady from from the north, not from New York, and I felt that responsibility when we were in church. It was my responsibility, <laughs> and whenever we visited relatives, it was my responsibility. Um, I didn't mind. I didn't mind. I really didn't know any other role to play. I was, and she was so definite about what she wanted from me that it was. And it served me well. <laughs>